condition that is called mucormycosis, uh, which in layman terms or common terms has been labeled as the black fungus. Now we know that uh, we have all, all been hit by the second wave of COVID-19 and there are several states and districts that are still battling to overcome this second wave. So uh, suddenly there has been an epidemic of the so-called black fungus across the country. So let us try to understand what is mucormycosis or black fungus. So mucormycosis is a group of fungal diseases. So it's caused by a fungus which belongs to the group of uh, mucor or rhizopus uh, kind of fungus. Uh, and these uh, diseases, this fungal disease has been there for many years. It's not something new. Uh, and if you see, it was very common previously in people who are immunocompromised. So any diabetic patient, especially type 1, who developed a diabetic ketoacidosis, which is an acute metabolic emergency, where the blood sugars would be very high, these people had a higher risk of getting a mucormycosis. Also patients who are immunocompromised in terms of having any form of cancer, if they were on any immunosuppressant drugs, or if they just underwent an organ transplantation and they were taking steroids, or if they are on long-term steroids for a longer duration, and if the immune system is weakened in that bargain, then those people were more susceptible for this mucormycosis. <clears throat> so what happens in this mucormycosis? Now, we've seen that in this COVID-19 pandemic, there were three to four main risk factors that were identified for people to develop this black fungus. So what were they? So we know that uh, corticosteroids are one of the mainstay of therapy in uh, moderate to severe COVID-19 hospitalized patients. But there as well, we have to be careful in how corticosteroids, whether intravenous or oral, high dose of these steroids are judiciously used because steroids can be like a double-edged sword. You can get a good efficacy in terms of reducing the cytokine storm, the inflammatory response will come down. But we need to understand that steroids are also immunosuppressant drugs. So on the other hand, it might suppress your immunity and allow pathogens, opportunistic pathogens like the black fungus or mucormycosis to uh, set in or affect that particular individual. So steroid usage is one of the risk factor. Second is the person getting diabetes or person already having pre-existing diabetes, especially if their blood sugars are not under control and it, it happens to be on the higher side. So high uncontrolled blood sugar, whether newly acquired or pre-existing diabetes is a risk factor for that person getting a black fungus. The third one is basically using devices that were previously used for another uh, COVID-19 patient and, it, and if it was not properly sterilized, uh, so sterilization has, be, has not been done or it has not been replaced, then that also becomes a risk factor. So what are these devices? So normally, you use the oxygen masks so that patients can be put on high flow oxygen. You use uh, ventilators that are shared amongst patients and other such equipments within the hospital which can increase the risk of a uh, black fungus infection. The fourth one that has been identified for some patients is also the use of certain immunosuppressant drugs which have been rampantly used in many COVID-19 patients. And these are basically your prosilizumab or etolizumab. So this also is known to suppress immunity and can make that person susceptible to getting this mucormycosis infection. Now, what are the symptoms? So when a patient is suspected to have mucormycosis, this patient will have a periorbital swelling. That means swelling around the eyes. There can be a, a headache for that patient. The patient can have fever. There can be nasal discharge. And uh, the patient in very severe cases will also have a blackish uh, formation around the nasal cavity. So that we call it as the escar, the, the mucormycosis escar. 
this black uh, formation of the fungus is very typical, very characteristic of mucormycosis. Now, if we pick it up in the early stages, then the prognosis, the chances of that patient not having severe complications are much lesser. But if it is picked up later, this we need to understand is a flesh-eating fungus. It will start with the mucous membranes and it can extend into the sinuses. It can even go into the uh, the cavern, uh, cavers, cavernous sinus and cause a cavernous sinus thrombosis, which is an acute emergency. It can go into the brain as well and cause a rhinocerebral uh, mucormycosis. So sinus, the cavernous sinus, uh, as well as uh, your cerebral tissues can be affected and in such cases that can lead to a more severe form wherein surgical intervention and it can even be life-threatening for that patient. So how do you diagnose a mucormycosis? So clinically I have already mentioned to you just by the presentation of the patient especially the puffiness around the eyes, swelling in the face is very indicative and the black eschkar that we get to see in the nasal turbinates or the mucous membrane of the nose. Apart from that, we will have to take a nasal swab and do a fungal culture. So when we study it under a culture, then the fungus uh, mucormycosis will be identified. Apart from that, you might even have to do certain imaging techniques. So the patient will have to undergo a CT scan or an MRI of the brain especially if the cerebral tissues are involved. Now, once we know that the patient has uh, developed uh, mucormycosis, the treatment only involves broad spectrum antibiotics. So, uh, sorry, broad spectrum antifungal agents. So drugs like amphotericin B, in fact, now there is a shortage of these drugs, is the treatment of choice. So once we pick it up, immediately we need to start uh, an antifungal agent like an amphotericin B. If the cases are more advanced and if there is rhinocerebral mycosis, then you might even have to do surgical in, uh, intervention and debridement, which is you'll have to remove those tissues which have been eaten up by this fungus. So it's a very deadly fungus and all measures should be taken to try to prevent uh, people from getting this fungus. So what do we do? So we know that it is the moderate to severe hospitalized COVID-19 patients who are getting uh, mucormycosis. So the best way of preventing it is very, very aggressive uh, blood sugar control. So starting insulin, ideally basal bolus, or even an insulin pump, uh, intravenous in, uh, insulin infusion pump to keep the blood sugars between 140 to 180. Secondly, the use of steroids judiciously use it only for a short period and during that period as well monitor for any signs early signs of mucormycosis and also to try and minimize the use of some of these monoclonal antibodies like uh, tocilizumab that i've already mentioned as far as devices always ensure that newer uh, you know equipments are used for patients try to avoid sharing if ventilators are used, we have to use it after it has been uh, properly, all the infection control measures have been properly followed. So this is a little bit about the black fungus and uh, we have to be watchful because already there is an epidemic amongst the pandemic of COVID-19 patients. If it has to come down, then immediate measures to prevent it has to be carried out and also availability of antifungals like amphotericin B has to be made available in all the critical care units of hospitals.